For the first bee theme DIY in this video, I'm going to be using this hexagon shaped sign that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be decorating the back of this sign. And to start, I am painting it with yellow Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. Next, I'm going to place these hexagon shaped decals that I cut out using my Cricut. And I'm going to place them all around my sign in a sort of honeycomb shaped pattern and I'm basically using them as stickers because once I have them placed on my sign where I would like I'm going to paint over top of them with some white paint and then once that is dry I'm going to remove all of the hexagon decal pieces and that will leave behind a honeycomb pattern where the stickers used to be will be yellow hexagons left behind and then the white surrounding it to make this cute little honeycomb pattern. Next, I'm going to tone the yellow down a little bit by distressing it using a little bit of white paint. I sketched out Just Be Yourself on this sign, and now I'm going over the pencil outline with a Sharpie. To finish off this sign, I'm adding this B decal that I cut out using my Cricut to the center of it. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using this house shape sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the floral pieces from the front of the sign. And it was pretty difficult to get these off. They were really glued on there pretty good, but I did end up using a scraper tool to try and get the leaves off because that was the most difficult. But it did take a little while, but I did eventually get them off. After I got off the flowers and the leaves, I gave the sign a light sanding to smooth it out. To decorate this sign, I'm using this adorable bead paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to go ahead and trace out the outline of the sign. And then I'm going to cut that out. To attach the bead paper, I am using some Mod Podge. And I just use a paintbrush to smooth this out before placing the paper over top. And I let that completely dry before putting one final layer of Mod Podge over top of the paper. To finish off this little bee sign, I'm going to be adding some twine and I added a little drop of hot glue to the back so that the twine would stay in place. And then I went ahead and wrapped it around about three times and tied a little bow. And that was it for this cute little house shaped bee sign.
For the next DIY, I'm going to be using this wood plaque that I got from Michaels. And I'm starting by painting the plaque with some white paint. I'm using these little wood letters that I also got from Michaels to spell out be kind on this sign and I'm painting it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze and one of my subscribers actually commented this little trick for painting small little letters like this um, is to place them on a piece of tape that way they don't move around and you don't have to try and hold them down with your fingers and this was a really great tip. I am adding the B word to the top of the sign and then kind at the bottom and to attach all of my little wood letters I'm using some Gorilla Glue and a toothpick to add the glue to the back of the letters that way you don't add too much glue and end up with a bunch of glue all over the sign. I cut out this cute little bee using my Cricut and I'm going to attach that to the right side of the sign in between the two words. The last thing that I did to finish off this bee kind sign was use a sharpie to add a little path behind the bee. Next, I'm going to show you how I made the honey for these honey dippers. So what I did was melt a couple of hot glue sticks down in an old pot that I no longer cared about. Then I added a couple of drops of yellow food coloring to it and mixed that around. And here I am swirling the honey dippers in the melted hot glue and then leaving them on a piece of parchment paper to dry. Then I took the leftover hot glue mix and spread this out over a piece of bubble wrap and I'm going to make this look like a piece of honeycomb. So I'm just going to spread that out as best I can and then leave that to dry. Once the honeycomb piece was completely dry, I did my best to peel the plastic bubble wrap off. It wasn't able really to come off very easily, but basically I just popped all the little bubbles and then peeled the plastic off. To decorate my honey dippers, I'm using some of these adorable wood bee embellishments that I got off of Amazon, and I will have them linked down below. And I'm just going to add a couple to each of the honey dippers and also the honeycomb piece. Next, I'm going to be making a honey jar using this leftover glass container that was actually a yogurt jar, so I am recycling that. And I'm starting off by painting it with some oily chalk paint. I just use gray, but it doesn't really matter what color because I'm going to be painting over it. But the reason that I first painted it with oily chalk paint is because it sticks to the glass much better than normal craft paint does. Once I painted it, the whole jar with the Waverly chalk paint, I went over it with this golden brown color.
I wrote honey on the front of my jar and I wrote this out like the Winnie the Pooh font and went over it with a sharpie. But I think this is really cute and I like how the end is backwards and I just really wanted to use that font for the honey jar. I want to make this honey jar look like it is overflowing with honey. So to do that, I am using my hot glue gun to make hot glue drips all the way around the rim of the jar. I cut out a cardboard circle that's the size of the hole on the top of the honey jar and I'm just gluing that into place and I also cut a small hole inside of it because I'm going to end up putting one of the honey dippers in that hole and here I am using the hot glue to cover the whole entire cardboard and I am making this essentially look like the honey jar is literally overflowing. Um, so all this hot glue, I'm going to make it look like honey. And for this, I'm using a different method for making the fake honey than I did with the honey dippers. So for this method, I literally just put the hot glue straight on there. And then to make the hot glue look like honey, I took some Mod Podge in a little cup and added a couple of drops of yellow food coloring and mixed this around. And then I'm going to be painting this directly onto the dried hot glue. And I did a couple of coats of this. So basically I would put a coat on, let it completely dry, and then paint another coat of this mixture. And it took about three coats to get the effect. So that is what it looked like after one coat. And here I'm painting on another coat. And I wasn't sure if this was going to work or turn out how I wanted it to. So I just did the top for the first coat. And then here I'm doing all the little drips of hot glue. Here is what the honey looks like after three coats of the Mod Podge mixture. And honestly, the second method for making honey is much easier. So if you want to make this, I would recommend doing it that way. Unless you wanted the yellow food coloring to be totally incorporated into the hot glue instead of painting it on. But I wanted to include both methods because I did make the honey dippers first before I came up with the second method. But I just added a couple of these wood bees to the honey jar and also one of the honey dippers into the hole. And that is it for this cute little honey jar. For the next DIY, I'm using one of these wood rolling pins from Hobby Lobby and I am painting it with the Maze Waverly Chalk Paint. And I'm just painting the center part of the rolling pin and I'm going to leave the handles of the rolling pin in the natural wood color. I'm not going to paint them. I wanted my rolling pin to say be happy so I used my Cricut to cut this out and here I am adding that onto my rolling pin. <laughs> Last thing that I did to finish off this little rolling pin for my bee themed tear tray was to wrap some twine around the end a couple of times and then I added a small little twine bow as well and also one of the cute little wood bees. Next up, I'm going to be making a little beehive because what's a bee theme to your tray without a beehive? So to do this, I am using the top of an Easter egg and some of Dollar Tree's twine, but it's the thick like rope twine. Um, I think they call it nautical rope. I could be wrong, but I think that's what they call it. And I'm just going to wrap this all the way around the whole Easter egg.
Next, I'm going to use a Sharpie to draw a circle on the front of the beehive to make it look like there is an entrance to the beehive. And once I have that black circle drawn on there, I'm going to glue some of the twine around the outer edge of that circle. To decorate the beehive, I'm going to glue on a couple of those cute little wood bee embellishments. 